morning and welcome to the Holy Beach Chapel. We're glad that you have chosen to worship with us on this Father's Day. Lest I forget it, I want to first thing say happy Father's Day to all of you fathers there. It is a special day and make no mistake, we do uh, appreciate all of your wisdom, your guidance, your sacrifices that you have made on behalf of your children. They, uh, they will uh, live on in your children as they are also fathers and they teach their sons and daughters the lessons that they have learned from you. And in fact, before we continue with this, before we acknowledge our first time uh, visitors, let's pause for just a moment as we, um, as we remember this day and as we offer thanks. Gracious God, we know that as fathers, as parents, we will never be perfect. We will be short-sighted. We will make mistakes. But help us, Lord, to be the best parents, the best spouses, the best person that we can be. And enable us to be open to the, the wisdom and the guidance that comes from you and also comes from others. And yes, Lord, often even from our children. We thank you, O oh God, for our fathers and father figures who have loved us, who have nurtured us, taught us, Help us to show our gratitude where it needs to be shown. And Lord, we also pray for those who have had difficult or strained relations with their fathers and perhaps don't get those warm, fuzzy feelings on Father's Day. In those cases, we pray that you will assist those who are in need of reconciliation or resolution or perhaps forgiveness, whether father or child. These are our prayers this morning, O oh God, offered in the spirit of the one who showed his love for one and for all. Amen. Amen. And now, this may be the first time that you've had an opportunity to worship with us here at the Holden Beach Chapel. And if it is, we want to recognize you and give you a little yellow sticker that will uh, uh, let everyone know that you are a first time visitor. Would you simply raise your hand? Uh, if you are a first-time visitor here at the Holden Beach Chapel, and if you are a regular, please make sure that you uh, speak to our first-time visitors and make them feel that they have indeed come home because we want everyone to feel that when they come into this fellowship, they are home. <clears throat> By way of announcements this morning, there's been a change in the place of our men's fellowship meal on Tuesday. We've been meeting over at... Um, what used to be Ma's, now is a sea biscuit. But this Tuesday at 8 o'clock, we'll be meeting here in the fellowship hall. Please let uh, uh, Hugh Wolf know if you're planning on coming. We'll have a great program, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at 8 o'clock Tuesday morning here at the fellowship hall. Last week, we began a pilot ministry, a grief ministry. Grief is one of those situations that doesn't get the, the recognition or the encouragement that we oftentimes need. And so we want to start a ministry here. Uh, it's called Grief Share. We've got uh, uh, the group signed up, but we're going to start another one the 1st of August, and you will find in your bulletin. If you are interested or want to know more information about this, please sign up, and we'll make sure that you get the information for the next group. But we think that this uh, time together with those who have experienced severe loss will be a time of encouragement, and it will be um, an opportunity to help each other. So if you're interested in this uh, grief uh, session here, please fill that out. And also, there are still two weeks left for you to sign up for your time and talent sheets, those little green sheets that we have been pestering you with for the last few weeks. Many of you have uh, filled them out, and we are very excited and uh, fortunate to have so many gifts and talents We'll do our best to fill you in those slots that you're most interested in. And then uh, let me remind you also a second helping. For those of you that are locals, you are aware of it. Second helping is a, a ministry where when you come to the beach, you buy groceries and you buy too much. You don't know what to do with it. You hate to throw it away. You can go over to the Beach Mart on Saturday morning between, let's see, 8 to 1030 and drop it off, even if it's open. And they will make sure that it's taken care of and given to people who are in need and it'll be a real blessings for all. 
We're so glad that you're here at the chapel this morning, and we look forward uh, to the rest of the service as we experience the presence of the Lord. Now, may we go to the Lord once again in prayer. We thank you for our homes here on earth, Lord, and for the joy of loving and being loved. This morning, we especially thank you for the love of Jesus Christ, who is even now carrying out his purposes in our time and in our lives. Call us this morning, we pray, to a new sense of dedication to love Christ, to love family, to love our fellow man as we have been taught by our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Would you now, and we're going to skip this responsive reading here, would you now turn to hymn number four, uh, 645, as we sing together, Faith of Our Fathers, please stand as we sing together. Creed. Would you turn to it, please, as we recite our faith? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, in whatever way that you are comfortable, please greet those that are around you and let them know that you're glad they're here. Good morning. Today's verse is Romans 5, 1 through 8. It can be found on page 1605 in your pew Bible. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh with patience. And patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commandeth his love toward us in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Please pray with me. Lord God, we give thanks for this glorious day and for health, grace, and peace. Bless those who are in need of hope, love, and kindness. Let us share the love you showed us with others unconditionally. We thank you for every blessing and for the strength you have, we have through you. And as we pray together the words you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'll continue our worship by turning to hymn number 263, to worship, work, and witness. Please stand as we sing together. Take our gifts, Lord, large or small, and let them be used in the building of your kingdom, in which there is no small gift, and there is no service that is unknown or unrewarded. Amen.
It's always one of my favorite weeks when Mike Cogdell comes to town. <clears throat> As you are probably aware, he's been coming here for years. He was the, uh, the founding dean at the uh, Divinity School over at Campbell University, and it still has his fingerprints all over it in a very positive way. He made Campbell Divinity School a wonderful place. Uh, I enjoy being there, not only to know him as professor and as dean, but also as a friend. I have no idea when I was there how many times he just sort of looked at me and shook his head, but he didn't give up on me. <laughs> he stayed with me, and it was uh, really one of the high points of my theological life to be there. Um, Dr. Cogdell has uh, been the interim pastor in over 20 churches since he has been a professor at Campbell and as the dean of the Divinity School. Just finished one uh, in um, Zebulun, yes. There's big words that uh, yeah, escape me sometimes from Zebulun. But so he is, uh, he is free. We're glad to have him here this week. Mike, you're always welcome at the Holden Beach Chapel. Thank you very much. Thank you, congregation. Thank you, Chaplain Rushing, for those kind words. Uh, I do remember shaking my head a time or two, but I don't think it was me. It was not uh, many uh, at all. Thank you, Holden Beach family, for the wonderful invitation to be here today, uh, to be a part of this joyful, happy family, uh, to hear beautiful anthems like we just heard this morning, and to let that facilitate our worship. Thank you so much. Uh, for the invitation to come today. And I also add my word of uh, congratulations and expressions of praise for this Father's Day uh, weekend to all of you. During this weekend, I've had the privilege to be with my two children and four grandchildren, and I'm grateful for that. And my wife and son and two grandchildren are here with me uh, this morning in worship. Uh, now, church, uh, my family's never sit on the sat on the front row. <laughs> so if they look a little nervous, just be kind and help them help them along. That would be uh, just great. Sometimes treasures are hiding in plain sight. Have you ever noticed that? Sometimes you'll find something in your home that is a treasure to you haven't seen it in a while. You come across it, it was hiding in plain sight. It works that way with people. Sometimes there are treasures hiding in plain sight. They might be relatives, might be neighbors, might be church members. A treasure was found hiding in plain sight. Sometimes it happens to churches when they, when they conduct searches. They're searching for staff of any particular variety or need in their church, and they've been looking and looking, and lo and behold, there was someone in their church that fit, fit that bill. A treasure was hiding in plain sight. I want you to know this morning that the same thing happens in the Bible. We think we know a lot about the Bible, we certainly do, but from time to time we come across treasures that are hiding, were hiding, are hiding in plain sight. <clears throat> that was the case for me with our text this morning. It comes from the last chapter in the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 16, verses 8 and 9. And I would like to think that I knew these verses were there. But I came across them recently, and it has reminded me uh, that many treasures are in the last chapters of the book of the Bible. Uh, sometimes we think those last chapters are given to farewells and travel plans and all these kinds of things. Uh, but we have great treasures, such as the Great Commission in Matthew, last chapter, last words. The book of Acts, our history book of the New Testament. The very last word in the book and in the last chapter is the word unhindered. It's an adverb. It's an adverbs, as you know, are strange creatures. Talking about Paul, he was going about preaching the gospel unhindered. Now that was his dream. 
to do that. And I'm glad that Dr. Luke preserved that for us and that we know that he got to preach the gospel unhindered. Very last word in the book. Here is a treasure I found recently. I share it with you today. I hope it will be a treasure for you. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 8 and 9. But I, Paul, will stay on at Ephesus until Pentecost because a wide door for effective work has opened for me, but there are many who oppose me. The King James Version of the Bible and the New International Version translate this verse and says, a great door. The New Revised Standard Version, which I read to you just now, uh, and the Amplified Version say, a wide door. The message, if you like the message, the message says, a huge door. Still other translations say, a mega door. Not in your bulletin this morning, but a verse I want to add to our worship this morning. Revelation 3.20. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. One of the sure things that scripture teaches, as all of you know, is that God is at work in our lives. And sometimes the way we say that is that God has a plan for our lives. I believe that, don't you? God is at work in our lives. You may not feel it this morning or this moment, but for every person here today, God is at work in your life. And he's at work in my life as well. Now, one of the ways, another way, God has a plan for our life is one way we, des we describe that. But another special way we often describe that is we use a great metaphor. And that metaphor is doors. It's not uncommon, is it? To hear someone talking about the way God works in their lives and say, God has opened this door for me. Sometimes we, you'll hear some people say that uh, God closed that door. I was hoping this would work out, but God closed that door. I was hoping I would get that job, but God closed that particular door. Open door, a closed door. Sometimes you will hear people talk about the way God works in their lives to say a surprising door. A door opened for me that I never dreamed would open. A surprising door. Have you had a surprising door open for you? And then sometimes people will say, God did not open the front door, but he opened the back door. He opened the back door. And I was allowed to enter into this plan, not through the front door, but I was able to move through the back door. Doors. Now, it's not uncommon to hear people talk like that, is it? God has a plan for my life, or God has opened doors for me. Well, what I want you to know in the text and what was a treasure hiding in plain sight for me was, this is not new for us. Paul used this great metaphor of doors. Paul received this great metaphor of doors. And he talked about it. He received a letter from the Corinthian church. Please return as quickly as you can. And Paul wrote back and said, no, I cannot. For a wide door, a mega door, a huge door has opened for me here in Ephesus. And I'm going to stay on here until Pentecost. Now, all of us here today know that this concept has been used in larger ways. If you have been privileged to visit in Israel and to go to the site where Jesus was born, 
The church of the Holy Nativity in Bethlehem is built over that site. You enter the church doors and have to go downstairs. But right before you go into where people believe the manger was, you go through some doors. And the doors have a name over them. And they are called the doors of humility. Before you go into where Jesus was born, you pass through the doors of humility. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Or if you've been to Rome and been to St. Peter's Basilica, and you know the great doors that open into the great hall are called the Jubilee doors. The cause to open the great doors is to see the majesty of God. The jubilee doors. The doors of humility. The jubilee doors. Many of you have visited the 9-11 Museum in New York City. You'll remember that day and that awful story. It took 102 minutes between the time the first tower was hit until the second tower fell. 102 minutes. And everybody was looking for doors. So when they built the museum to honor 9-11, if you've been there, you've seen it. The theme is doors. Remember, people were looking for doors. And Jesus our Lord and his great I am sayings, one of them is, I am the door. And you can enter in by way of me. Doors. Now, some of you who love music may be hearing Bob Dylan in the background. Knocking on heaven's door. This talented choir may be hearing that, that one today. The whole concept of doors. Now, our text today is exciting. But it's also very informative. Paul in Ephesus. He receives a message, a letter from the church at Corinth asking him to return as quickly as he can. And you know that that church had a litany of difficulties and the problems. And they're asking Paul to come. And so through this messenger, he writes back and says, no, I cannot come now. I am going to stay here in Ephesus until at least Pentecost for a wide door, a huge door, a mega door has opened for me in Ephesus. Now, the background of this is very informative. Ephesus, as you know, in biblical times was one of the four largest cities in the world. Rome, number one, Alexandria, and Athens, and then Ephesus. Josephus, that great first century historian, tells us that though Ephesus was a great and booming city, there was no Christian witness in Ephesus. And apparently what's going on with Paul is the door has opened now for salvation in the name of Jesus to be heard by the people in Ephesus. Now they would know a baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so Paul said, this door now has opened. Josephus, the historian, says there were at least 33 temples in Ephesus dedicated to the Roman goddess of Diana. But there was no church. Paul says, a great door. I can't come right now. Because a door, a big door, has opened for me in Ephesus. And aren't we thankful that Paul went through this door? Now we can look back on all of that. And Ephesus became a great Christian city for the spread of the gospel. Paul made his headquarters there many times. You'll remember, this is where he met Priscilla and Aquila. We have a book in the Bible now. The letter to the Ephesians. Scottish scholar John Knox says it's the queen. It's the queen of the epistles. 
where we have the great knowledge of the church in chapters 1 to 3 and then in chapters 4 to 6, the practical application of chapters 1 to 3. We have all that now. I mentioned the end of the book of Acts to you just a moment ago. The very last word is unhindered. Paul preaching the gospel unhindered. We lose sight as far as the biblical records go of the apostle Paul at that point. Uh, that's the last view of, we have of him as far as the Bible records go. But newer scholarship these days suggests that Paul left uh, Rome in that day and he was released for a while. He traveled where? He wanted to go back to Ephesus. And many scholars think now this is where he wrote the final books the pastoral epistles, 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus, in Ephesus after he was released from that time. We don't know that totally for sure. But it makes good sense, doesn't it? He wanted to go back to Ephesus. Aren't you glad he walked through this door? What would have happened if Paul had not walked through the door? What happens, friends, when we don't walk through the doors that God opens before us? What doesn't happen? Is there a door before you this morning? If you don't know the answer to that, I've come here to tell you. Every single one of us here in this church has a door in front of us. Of some type. There's no one here, no one, that does not have a door. It's one of the ways God works in our lives. That's our theme this morning. It's one of the ways God has a plan for our lives. There's no one here that doesn't have a door. What's the door in front of you? There may be some of you this morning dealing with the very fact that God has opened a door, a door is open, and you're not quite sure exactly how to do about it or to go through it. A door. What a text. I can't come now. A mega door, a huge door, has opened, opened for me in Ephesus. And I've got to go through this door. And I'm going to stay here until Pentecost. What are some lessons about doors for us this morning as we see this great text? One I just mentioned. God has doors for all of us. It's one of the ways he works in our lives. He has doors for you and doors for me. Now, here's what I want you to know. Sometimes the size of the door is your answer. Paul says, I can't come now. A huge door. A wide door. A mega door. Has opened for me. The door came Flying open. How many of you know this to be true? In doors that have opened for you, you didn't have to knock it down. It just opened. And sometimes it's a big door, isn't it? Have you ever had God to just open a big door? Sometimes the size of the door is your answer. I used to tell my students at Campbell Davinci School, don't, don't sit around trying to figure out God's will all the time. We already know it. God's will is the redemption of humanity in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son. we got to get busy helping that happen. And if you will take that as your launching place, there are Doors abundant that are opening around us. 
God has doors for us all. Are you ready to answer one today? Are you ready to go through a door? My son Jason is with me today. I don't want to embarrass him. But a few years ago, he caught a vision. He believes and still believes that a great duty of disciples is to bless other people. He started a foundation called Call to Bless. Its whole purpose is to bless other people with meeting their needs, finding out needs. Sometimes there are people the church can't even touch. And he's been about that, and the stories are just incredible. But a door opened for him, and he walked through that door. God has doors for us all. God has doors for us all. Are you ready to answer one this morning? Ready? There's a second big teaching in this lesson, and that is sometimes the doors others want you to go through is not the door for you. Ever had that experience? Corinthians said, drop whatever you are doing. Put it down. Get on a boat and get back here as fast as you can get back here. That's the door they wanted Paul to go through. Now, sometimes, sometimes, the door that others want you to go through is not the door for you. We experience that a lot sometimes. We talk about calling, don't we, and choosing vocations. Other people may want us to go this way, but we feel God leading in a different way. Sometimes that happens. And I want to make it real clear this morning. The people of Corinth had a door open. Paul said no. He couldn't come through that door right now. And I want to make it very clear with you. There may be some doors before some of you today that you just can't walk through right now. And I want you to know God is not angry with you. God may open a door for you, but right now you're caring for aging parents. Right now you're trying to raise your children. Right now you have some obligations that, that I just cannot walk through that door right now. God is not angry with you. Timing, timing is an important factor in calling and in going through the doors. But what, what we, Paul wants to, this to be measured with is this. God does not want you to settle for less either. He doesn't want me to. Doesn't want Holden Beach Chapel to. How many people do you know who have settled for less? They don't know those treasures that come from the abundant life in Christ. Treasures where thieves can't break in and steal. Treasures that live in our hearts for life. So, Maybe the timing is not right today. And it may have to wait till another day. But at the same time, don't settle for less than all God has for us. Sometimes, sometimes the size of the door is the answer. It just comes right to you. You didn't have to pray about it. It just came right to you. Sometimes the door others want you to go through is not the door God wants you to go through. It's another door, another time, and another place. And I don't want to miss the very last verse, the uh, section of this verse. Uh, Paul said, I can't come 
a mega door, a wide door is open for me, comma. Then he ended the verses saying, but there are adversaries. Very realistic, isn't it? That's why there's a difference between news that we get Monday through Saturday and good news. The gospel of Jesus Christ that we get on Sunday. There's a difference, isn't it? There are adversaries. We live in a secular world. We live, we live in a world that's not quite organized around the same kind of values that the church is. And we walk through those, those doors that happen. But we're reminded here to resist the things that pull you away from your door. If you're feeling that open door this morning, resist anything that would pull you away, that would pull you away from that open door. Paul said, a wide door is open, but there are adversaries. There is opposition. So resist those things and go through those wonderful open doors. What a treasure. Hiding right here in plain sight. I like to think that I, would, I knew it was there. But what a blessing to discover this treasure. And may I mention one last thing. One more important door. Maybe the most important door of all. Revelation 3.12. Here I am. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if you will open the door, open the door, I will come in and fellowship with you and you with Maybe you feel the Lord knocking on the door of your heart this morning for the very first time. You haven't made a profession of faith in Christ yet. Or maybe, maybe you, you want to hear it again, make a rededication. You hear the Lord knocking on the door of your heart and of your mind. I hope this morning you'll hear the invitation. Open that door. Open that door and invite the Lord to come into your heart. Maybe for salvation this morning. To come to know Christ and to love him and to live for him. Or maybe it is for rededication. I want to hear, I want, I want to open that door anew and invite the Lord to come in. To my heart this morning. What about you? Is there a huge door? A wide door? A mega door? That's opening for you this morning. I'll tell you. I think this is one of the way God works in our lives. And one of the way he has a plan for us. If, the, if he's knocking on the door of your heart, won't you say yes this morning? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn is 488. May we stand. Your chaplain will be here to receive you if any of you would like to make public decisions this morning or maybe make them right where you are. May we stand and sing to the glory of God.
mercy of God that you have been delivered to this hour. And it will be by the love and the strength 